So here I have my test plan template. Now, the, again, this document is going to be given to you guys. This is not something you have to create from scratch. It's a simple table. I've gone into detail here with um, what's that? 13, 14, 15 tests. You don't have to do what I do, but this is how I broke mine down. Some of these tests are repeated, so you can join some of them. But this is just how I prefer to do mine. Having smaller individual sections at work, you can always bring them together. And a good thing about programming these steps, for example, is that, for example, if I have my LED green working and I can have my LED red working, I can put those in a single function, combine them together and just have one function that I can use again and again and again without having to copy and paste code multiple times. But we'll get to that when we get to it. So for test one, I say, well, again, we have test number at the top. We have purpose of the test, test condition, so how we actually check and the expected result. Pretty self-explanatory, I believe. So test 01, I say test that the LED can be triggered properly. That's the purpose of the test. Uh, test condition, write a program to flash the green LED. The condition is just, I mean, you don't have to link any if statements to it. Simply say, turn the LED on, wait for one second, turn the LED off. That's my test condition for me, right? Once the LED comes on, that's fine. The expected result, the green LED should turn on for one second and then turn off. I've got exactly the same thing here for the red LED. Now, keep in mind, my test plan must, must, must link back to my requirements. So whatever I said in my activity two, part one, I have to link my test back to that. And because I've said green LED, red LED, buzzer, LCD, I'm gonna speak about those specific things. Whatever you say in yours, that's what you're testing here. All right, let me jump to test number three. It says a tester buzzer can be activated from the microcontroller. Write a program to activate the buzzer for a single one second buzz. So beep, then it goes off. The buzzer should be audible and stay on for one second. That's it, right? The level, I would probably say just maximize the level. So let's just say for argument's sake, you have one that has 10 different levels. I would just simply say, put it at the maximum level. Why not, right? Uh, test 04, check if the LCD can be activated. Uh, by the microcontroller, write some program to turn the LCD on. We're not doing anything with the LCD yet, just to turn it on, just to activate it, just to say initiate, just to say initialize. The LCD should turn on either with backlight being bright and foreground being dark or the opposite. Some LCDs, you have the backlight or the background of the thing comes on and the foreground or the text you see is actually dark or the opposite way around. It doesn't really matter once it turns on and you can see it turns on. That's a test. It sounds silly, sounds simple, but that's a test to check if it works. Next, check if the LCD can be activated by the micro microcontroller and put popular characters on screen. I think simple characters, alphabet, right? Because we have, I'm gonna be using a 16 by two LCD. 16 by two, that's 32. I can put my alphabet, which is 26. I'll still have six spaces left. That should be fine. Write some code to check that all alphabet and number characters can be displayed on the screen. So I can have 26 um, numbers. Let me just put this here. 26, uh, sorry, alphabet characters. And I can have, uh, I guess, six numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if those work, that's fine. So again, this is just testing stuff. The LCD should turn on and display the full alphabet or any type of textual data passed to it. So I'm going to pass to it the number 1.49 that should be displayed. I'm going to pass the alphabet to it, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the alphabet to it. That should be fine. I'm going to pass minus 1.24 to it. That should be fine as well. Test number six. Now, again, my tests are not the only tests and I did not test for everything. I didn't finish this section. I think if I go through enough of them, you guys will see how the test should be done based on the scenario that we that we were given and based on the requirements that you came up with. So test 06 can, uh, sorry, check that account function will work and output the results to the Python or Thunny console. So let me just open Thunny quickly and show you what that might look like. So on my Thunny console here, so when I do something like um, uh, print hello, right? It comes to the, oh, that. Python is not plugged in. Sorry, one second. Uh, let's just refresh that. If I do print and I do, I'm going to leave all these errors in just so you guys know how to fix these things. And I print hello. What I did there, this is the console. This thing down here is the shell or the console. So I, this is where I'm going to see my outputs. On this section up at the top, this is where I'm going to write my program. I'm going to save it and run it. And the outputs should come up down here. What I just did 
when I um, had the Raspberry Pi plugged in, it didn't detect it because I probably moved the moved um, the USB port, restarted the laptop, whatever the case is, right? Simply click on the name down here where it says MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico Com5 and click on it again. What it will do, it will simply go and check the system again, see where that is and reconnect it. So now it's been reconnected. So again, this is a console down here. This is the Thony console down here. I said write some code to count or increment based on some value. I can increment by one, two, three, four. It doesn't really matter what I increment by. I simply want to see the output at the bottom, right? The values should be stored in a variable. This is quite important for for using it later on again and be and be outputted to the console so a user can view the results. So let's just say I had a calculation that when um, A equals 100 and I say uh, B equals 2 and I say C equals uh, A divided by, what did I say, B, right? Oh, what did I do there? One second. A divided by B. And I could do a print and I can say C, right? Oh, that's capital C. One second. Print uh, C. When I print that now, I should get the number 50. So this is my value being stored in variables, being outputted to the console. So again, this is these are all tests that we should be able to. These are all these are all very easy tests, and it helps us fill that table out. But it also helps us to incrementally build up the system, because if you haven't noticed yet, what's what I'm doing here? I'm 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 testing the LEDs, I'm testing the buzzer, I'm testing the LCD. Then I'm coming here to test MicroPython, and I'm testing the LCDs again. Right, all I'm doing here is getting stuff working. Now, when it's time for me to actually put my system together. If I have the individual sections working, I just simply put them together, right? So I can have a function. So let's say I have a function. I define a function and I call this one, uh, let's say green, oh, I can't spell, <laughs> gr green LED flash, right? That's the name of my function, right? I can simply call this function later on when I want the green LED to flash. So rather than copying that entire section of code again, I can simply call that function. So that's why it's good to do these tests to build up your system logic and actually build up the system working so you can then use it later on. I think I was still on number six. This should be some output to the terminal. No, not that one. Add account value to the LCD. What that means, again, feel free to, to pause the video and read what you need to read. I've zoomed in as much as I can, I believe. So you should be. this should be clear on screen. I've said add account value to LCD. Write some code to check a single count uh, value can be updated to the LCD in real time. What that means again, I'm having my count display here. So I'm saying one, two, three, four, and I'm doing that for each one of them, right? All I'm going to do next is actually say, well, put it to the LCD instead. Because remember, the person running the system in a factory might not see this. They most likely won't see this. What they will see, though, is they will see the LCD and see the count on the LCD. So adding the number to the LCD would make sense. Now, what I'm saying here is not test number eight and test number seven could have been joined, but I separated them just because, right? Add two count values to LCD. Write some code to check that two count values can be updated to the LCD in real time at the same time. The LCD should have a count value on the first row being increased by one. There should also be a second count value on the second row being increased by any number. I've just said five here. It doesn't matter which number it is just any number because back in my let, let me scroll all the way back back in my example here remember this was going to be let me zoom in again this was going to be on the lcd itself so this might then change to 12 oh sorry this might change to 12 that might change to uh seven oh that might change to seven then this might go to 13 and it's going to keep increasing so i want the lcd itself to have those values keep increasing why not because it's much easier much more user friendly there's no guessing as to how many good products we've had so far and how many bad products we've had so far it's very clear it's on the lcd simply read it let me scroll back down i think i was on test seven or eight all right so test eight where was i um yep yeah, now test nine get values from magnetic sensor now i haven't specified a magnetic sensor yet we don't need to specify everything here that's a very specific sensor whereas leds is like a common known thing that everyone uses the magnet sensor or the magnetic sensor will be tested at rest to get a base value let me explain what this means when something is at rest it's not moving there's no value there it's just how it is generally so when it's at rest it's just turned on not doing anything not next to a magnet just by itself 
it will then be moved closer and closer to a magnet of similar size to the mount body's magnet. What that means is I'm going to turn it on, get the value that it is as soon as it's turned on for like, like I don't know, 30, 30 seconds. I keep checking the value, keep checking the value. It might go up and down by a few millivolts, but that's fine. Keep checking the value, keep checking the value. When I put that magnet closer to the magnet sensor, the value should ideally change. It might go up, it might go down, it doesn't really matter. The value of the magnetic sensor should increase printing out a new value onto the console. So if the value of that sensor actually goes up or down, whether it be um, 0 or 1, 1 or 0, if it goes from um, minus 2.5 to positive, it doesn't matter. Once the value changes, I'm going to print that value on the console so I can see what the actual value is. So when I'm writing my program, I can say, well, okay, if the magnetic sensor's value goes above, I don't know, let's just say for argument's sake, 2 volts then the system should do something. Test number 10, print magnetic sensor value to LCD. The value of the magnetic sensor will be printed to the LCD screen once the value has changed from the base value along with the message magnet detected. Remember, this was just a console. The first test up here, test number nine was just a console. So just this thing here in Python, sorry, in Thunny. Then this one is actually gonna be the LCD. So the actual screen, the tiny 16 by two screen that we have. And I've done test 11, which is more or less the same thing. Magnetic sensor and LEDs working together now. A check should be done with a magnetic sensor. If there is a magnet present, the green LED flashes. If there is no magnet present, the red LED flashes, right? Nice and simple. The green LED should come on or the red LED should come on. One of them should come on. Now, it might be completely messed up the way it does it. If you want to change my answers here and put what you think is best, that's fine. But this is just me breaking down the system again. Test number 12, magnetic sensor, LEDs and a buzzer. So now I'm just adding individual things again to try and build up the entire system. A check should be done to see the um, with the magnetic sensor. If there is a magnet present, the green LED should flash and the buzzer should make a single sound. Beep, that's fine. The green LED should come on with a single buzz or the red LED should, should come on with a double buzz, right? That means beep beep is probably the thing not detecting anything. Test number 13, magnetic sensor, LEDs, buzzer and LCD. A check should be done with a magnetic sensor. If there is a magnet present, the green LED should flash. The buzzer um, make a, make, should make a single sound and the LCD should show magnet detected. Obviously this was spelt a bit wrong here, but that's fine. If there is no magnet present, the red LED flashes and the buzzer should beep twice and the LCD should show no magnet detected, right? So now I'm slowly again building up my system because again, if this is there, someone who's standing right there who doesn't understand what's going on can simply see the message. Oh, no magnet detected. Okay, that's fine. Oh, that one said magnet detected. And my test, my, my expected results again, the green LED should come on with a single buzz and with a magnet detected on the LCD. I should think I should add flash as well. I think I left out the LED flash as well, but that's fine. Um, the red LED should come on with a double buzz with no magnet detected on the, on the LCD. So that's the liquid crystal display. That's the tiny screen. And again, this is it, number 14, batches of 10 good products. A check will be done to identify when a good batch of 10 items has been reached. The LCD should indicate the number of good, uh, of good products and save this to a text file. Again, this is overkill, as I mentioned before. The text file thing is overkill, but if you want to do it, do it. Why not? Batches of 10 bad products. So exactly the same thing as test 14, but one is for good products, one is for bad products. You, you can combine these tests because it's more or less just doing the same code, or, but just checking for different things. So rather than saying, um, if good equals 10, then flash green LED, you simply say, if bad equals 10, flash red LED, right? That's all it is. That's how the test is built up. It's, it's an easy section, I believe, if you can break down your initial system requirements, your initial software and hardware requirements, and simply say, what do you think you will be able to need to do in order to have a fully functioning system? Test everything. If you don't think you should test it, test it. It's that simple. If you think you should test it as well, test it. There's, there's no way you, you can have too many tests. I've, I already have 16 tests here. What I would say is get the main things out of the way first, get the functional stuff out of the way first, and then start adding the non-functional things. And again, functional requirements are things that must be done for the system to be complete. 
non-functional requirements are those where it's nice to have like it's nice to have the lcd having batches of 10 um, on the actual screen but it's not a requirement it makes more sense for me to test the magnetic sensor is working properly the magnetic sensor can detect a magnet the, sy the system can know when a magnetic sensor has detected those tests make more sense but i just did 15 random tests here just to show you what i might do i'm not going to do any more because hopefully this was clear enough for you guys hopefully this made sense if you guys have any questions about this just drop them in the comment section below and i will try my best to try and either answer your questions or just do a single video answering all the questions at once all right thank you <laughs>